Well, what's up guys? We're gonna do a defrost board replacement on a Linux, get this outdoor unit and coil cleaned and uh, vacuum the drain line. By the way, guys, watch that short that I posted. It's an aluminum slash copper braze repair on a condenser coil on a train package unit. I'll put a link to it down in the description. All right, guys, we are working on a Linux pump. And it's got a bad defrost board in it. It's dropping Y to the contactor. So we bypass that. Thanks to Travis. Congratulations to him for winning that meter for the giveaway. And uh, appreciate everybody that participated in that. Last time I was at this house, there's a somewhere there's a hornet's nest in the ground over here and they were all over the place and we'll replace this defrost board and i'm gonna get this outdoor unit cleaned up get that drain line cleared and uh make sure this system's running like it's supposed to but yeah it was intermittently the defrost board was dropping y to the contactor on this thing and uh causing intermittent issues with the air conditioning not working but uh anyway we'll get this door or this board swapped out and uh we'll get this thing cleaned up out here all right guys so i got that defrost board swapped out real quick just got an outdoor switch on it to keep the heat strips from coming on i think it's set to 35 degrees so uh we're gonna get this outdoor coil cleaned up real quick and i'm kind of out in the country so luckily to have good water pressure out here you don't always have good water pressure i typically will pre-rinse my coils before I start soaking them down with cleaner. Get all the crud. Yeah, this is a Linux, so as you can see, I did take the panels off. Just makes it a lot easier to do a more thorough job. Sometimes, like Goodman's, older Goodman's, and sometimes getting coil guards are, are a little aggravating to get off. If you got a Nordine unit, you've got that, some of them at the Gibsons and the, uh, I forget all their manufacturers' names, but they put that right behind that wire co coil guard. They'll put that, uh, that little cross mesh uh, guard right behind that as well. Uh, don't let anybody come out to your house and take that off if you're a homeowner watching this. Yeah, it has a purpose. It is a hell guard. Um, some people take it off because it just makes it easier for them to clean it but they really should put it back on because it does serve a purpose I like to give my coils a good thorough rinse, rinse down to get all that crud out of the bottom down there and then I've just got a diluted mixture of condenser coil cleaner that I I'm partial to a pump sprayer. I do have a coil gun. I wasn't sure what kind of water pressure I was going to have out here when it comes to hooking up the coil gun. So but I kind of like a pump sprayer. I just feel like I can do a more thorough job. All right, for whatever reason, it was hanging up. So we're going to spray this thing down real good. You know, and I grew up with the pump sprayer, so they are what I like to tend to use when I'm spraying a coil down. I just, for some reason, I feel like I can do a more thorough job. 
and the coil guns that I have used for some reason it feels like I'm no matter where I set it I'm somehow wasting cleaner it seems like it uses way more than I feel like it should based on the way that things are marketed where with this I can put me a little mixture in there I usually fill it up about a about right down to in here somewhere and this was already kind of pre-diluted from a job from the other day but I then fill it up with water and kind of mix it the way I want it and it works just fine so use a coil gun use a pump sprayer whatever you're comfortable with like to spray back there maybe break off some of that mud a little bit and she's got a lot of clay out here like I said this is out in the country and uh, there's snakes out here I've seen and any problems with these bees yet it was a hummingbird actually it was pretty cool I wish I had the camera on hovering around in that tree a while ago anyway we get this thing sprayed down real good And I'm gonna spray it on the outside because the that, that dirt packs from the inside or from the outside in. So I'm gonna let that sit there and soak a little bit. I might douse it around the inside just a hair. Just foaming through in some places. This coil's not extremely dirty. But uh you can see it's foaming in down in that corner. And a lot of the times the corners are where a lot of units get neglected when the cleaning gets done. But uh, we'll set that aside. And you can see it's starting to foam in. So I'm going to let that sit just a little bit. And then we're going to we're gonna rinse it out. All right, guys, it's been about seven, eight minutes, and uh, we're gonna rinse this thing down. You can see, I carry a little ammo crate, and I use these expandable, collapsible hoses that draw up when you let the water out of them. Keep two in there. Um, Milwaukee shop back, obviously. Keep two of them in there. They've always worked. I mean, they're, they're only about $24, $25 a piece. If I can get a year out of them, I'm fine. Because I find some people like those zero G hoses that you see at Lowe's. Those things are ungodly expensive. And even though they, they're they easy to roll up, they're still bulky. Where these things draw up to, the 25 foot hose draws up to about 12 feet long. I can throw it right in that ammo crate with two of them a couple of nozzles and it fits in a nice small compact footprint out of the way not taking up a bunch of room but those zero g hoses they have a lot of those busts they don't barely get through a year i don't think they're worth worth a damn bit of money that they charge for them So, it's just a simple car, replace a board and get this coil clean. I'm going to get that vacuum clean that drain line out and make sure it's it's clear
No, I think everybody's seen somebody clean a condenser for us. So. I'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, we're going to check this capacitor real quick. And I'm going to get this thing turned back on. So this is a 40 by 5. Let's see what we got. So we've got a 40 out of 40 and 5.0 out of 5. So our capacitor is good. Alright guys, the Milwaukee M12 brushless. I keep a 4 amp and a 5 amp high output battery for this. Not bad for doing magnets on drain lines. Sometimes trying to get a stubborn clog out, you need a little bit more. You've seen how I do that. But on a general maintenance, fuck. You know, kind of flushing and vacuuming the drain line, they work pretty good. Got some crud out of it, but I think it was fairly clear. Alright. Trying to get some of this goop off of here. You know, and I go that extra little step just to kind of get little places like that off the top of the unit. It's really the only thing the homeowner is going to see when you come out and do a maintenance. Most of them aren't crawling in the house or screwing around in the attic. So if you leave the outdoor unit looking like as they're concerned, it all looks that way. So, so I get it cleaned up pretty good. Sometimes I have a brush, a larger like a car wheel brush. Especially the pet package units where the top of the package units are always mildewed on top sometimes. As they sit under trees. And I'll brush that down, clean it all up the best I can. Try to make it look worth something. Just leave it better than you found it anyway. So let's go get this thing turned back on. Alright guys, got that defrost board replaced. Got a good coil cleaning done on it. We vacuumed out that drain line a little extra. So she shouldn't have any problems hopefully everything goes fine this winter and then uh thank you guys for watching appreciate it have a good one and uh see you on the other side